Good morning and good afternoon. Welcome to the Weekend Wellness Hour show. Today, I'm very excited to talk about sound and its effects on the brain with Dr. Richard Gold. So Dr. Gold or Rick, he was introduced to me by a mutual friend and we hit it off and I am very fascinated by his background. He has done a lot of work in acupuncture and helped co-found a college to help practitioners and but now one of his passions is how does sound affect the brain and how you can create music to help the brain. So I'm very excited to have you on today, Rick. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm so happy to be with you, Amy. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about your background and kind of how you ebbed and flowed and ended up into what you're doing today with music and acupuncture, all of that? Well, certainly. Well, I, I guess the best place to start is in my childhood where I always wanted to be a doctor. And um, I had the blessing or curse of coming of age during the late 60s, early 70s in college. And that whole plan got thwarted at that time. Um, and uh, long and short of, I graduated from Oberlin College with a degree in religious studies. And, um, and that led me into uh, personal searching where I was living out in the woods of Kentucky as a hermit uh, for five years. And um, during that time, uh, I woke up one day and all I wanted to do was study acupuncture. I had never met an acupuncturist and uh, I had been exposed to Tai Chi and Chinese uh, philosophy and thought and literature. But the idea of acupuncture was like a, a shooting star that just bumped into my head. I had a little challenge at that time because there were no acupuncture schools in America. And I was living out in the woods of Kentucky, so I had no access really to the world. There was no internet to your younger listeners. Yeah. Uh, but the dream never stopped. And then in 1977, um, I accidentally um, discovered this New England School of Acupuncture had just opened. I had actually gone back to my uh, help my parents move out of the home that they raised my brothers and myself in, in Cincinnati, and uh, stopped for a soy burger at the only vegetarian restaurant in town and uh, saw an ad that announcing a state first state approved school of Chinese medicine and acupuncture. And in that moment, again, I saw my path uh, open before me. Mm -hmm. So in 1977, I moved to Boston and enrolled in acupuncture school and have never looked back. Um, it's a joy of my life. It's such a privilege to practice this medicine to help bring it to the West. And um, so I still practice clinically you now at 40, 45 years later. And along the way, I had the privilege of uh, uh, starting uh, the Pacific College of Oriental Medicine, now the Pacific College of Health and Science, um, which started in the mid 80s here in San Diego, and then now has campuses in New York City and Chicago. Yeah. It's regionally accredited. There's It's a doctoral level program now. And quite frankly, I can, I'm just astounded that it's way beyond my dreams of how Chinese medicine has found a place in, in the West. And uh, it's, it's, it's really quite remarkable. It's like, I can just leave it at that. It's like, um, um, I, I was able to do advanced studies in China in 1980. And I, I did a three month sabbatical in Japan and Taiwan and Hong Kong in 86. Um, and in Japan, I um, was led to a sensei of shiatsu, a type of lymphatic shiatsu that I studied with him. And I've published a book in that, in that field. Um, and then in 1988, I, um, I went to Thailand. I, I needed a break from everything I was doing. And I went to Thailand mainly to pursue my interest in yoga, meditation, and food. And um, I had never heard of Thai massage at that point. Um, Nuad Boran, the, the ancient healing art of, of body work in Thailand. And um, after the long, long trip, I was in a tuk-tuk taxi in Chiang Mai, and I saw an ad on the back of the tuk-tuk driver. Uh, they called it ancient Thai massage. That's how they distinguish it from the massage that was developed for uh, U.S. soldiers during the Vietnam War. I'll leave okay. it at that. Okay. And um, I went and had a Thai massage. And again, something just magical came to me. I mean, it's a combination of meditative practice and, and, and partner yoga. Mm -hmm. And it provided one of the deepest meditative experiences I've ever, I've ever had. Wow. 
And during the, that, that month I was in Thailand, uh, besides eating every day, I pretty much got a Thai massage every day. And I noticed that there was definitely a, a theme of, of similarity between different areas in the country. And I was always in the north or, or in Bangkok. And when I would try to ask the practitioners where they were lear learning it, I got no, no answer. Um, interestingly, I, after that uh, month in Thailand, I stopped in Bali for a little bit and then went to New Zealand. And a naturopathic friend who was hosting me had turned, converted a house in Auckland into a healing center. And lo and behold, there was a physical therapist there who was practicing Thai massage. Okay. And I said, where'd you learn this? He said, oh, there's a school in Chiang Mai that has a program for foreigners. I said, whoa. Yeah. And so um, when I got back to San Diego, I actually wrote a letter, mm -hmm. uh, put a stamp on it. Mm -hmm. Another anachronism. And, uh, and within less than a year, I was back in Thailand and I enrolled in the program in Thai massage. Now, this is a long segue to how the music happened in a way. Uh -huh. So uh, I studied it and then I eventually I brought my teacher to the United States in 1992 for a six month sabbatical teaching here in San Diego and really started to uh, create interest in Thai massage, which is magnificent body work. It really is very, very special. It's really not massage per se, it's hands on, but you stay clothed, there's no oils, there's really no long strokes, there's no effleurage or really petrissage. Okay. Um, and uh, I started to develop a curriculum with him and then eventually that turned into a published book uh, in the field. And, um, and with that book, which combined my interest, uh, that, not that book, but the whole field combined my interest in, in Buddhist culture and Buddhist meditation and body work and healing and en energetic work. And um, that work um, I presented to the, uh, the, the education director at Esalen Institute in Big Sur, and I got invited to Esalen to teach, nice. which, which I did for 15, 15 consecutive years. And on that, one of my teaching trips to Esalen in Big Sur, I met a man who was there teaching a class in neuroscience and sound, a man named Yuval Ron. And this is where we get to our, our subject of the day. Yeah. And, um, and well, I'll go back. So I met Yuval Ron and he was teaching. He's actually a, a, a musician, a composer, a, um, a runs a foundation for bringing music into schools. Um, and he's had a very successful career in Hollywood. And he has an interest in the sound and neuroscience too. That's why he was teaching there with a, a prominent neuroscientist named Mark Waldman. Mm -hmm. Prior to the meeting Yuval for almost seven or eight years, I had been using sound, what's known as binaural beats to try to um, deepen my meditation experience. Um, okay. One thing I've learned, and I first studied meditate, or was it, did a meditation, uh, what we call Vipassana meditation, a retreat um, when I was in college, I did a month long in 1971. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and what I learned over the next 20, 30 years is how hard it is for me to meditate. It's really, it's much easier to build a career and, you know, business, you know, all these things, but meditation, and it's still, I'm not saying I'm an accomplished meditator. Mm -hmm. um, so I started using binaural beats, which is where you have uh, one frequency in one ear, you have to use headphones for efficacy. Okay. One, one beat, one frequency in one ear, one in another, and the brain modulates it to a third frequency. Okay. And, um, the research on this is not definitive, but my experience was it definitely helped bring my brain to uh, equipose more than I had been able to with mm -hmm. various breathing techniques and yoga and Tai Chi and Qi, Qi mm -hmm. So I had this interest, but what, what the binaural sounds that I was using at that time were not musical. It was more like crickets, uh, like just tapping almost. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe some synthesized music occasionally um, okay. was provided. And so when I met Yuval in Esalen, I, pres I asked him, is there a way to bring a, a higher level of musicality to this area of, of sound healing, of, of bringing uh, either binaural beats or, or isochronic beats, or what we call brain entrainment, where, where you introduce a beat, a frequency, and the brain will begin to modulate to it. Mm -hmm. begin to pace to it. And this we see in nature. We, you see it with clicking of insects and, you know, birds singing. It's, it's, a, it's a, a known phenomena. And uh, with functional MRIs, we can actually track the brain now in, in this regard and e EEGs, electroencephalographs. And he thought that was an interesting possibility. 
Um, and so we shook hands and uh, decided we were going to uh, work together. We added to the mix that we wanted to use uh, ancient wisdom traditions w with uh, modern neuroscience to, cre to create our music. And we wanted all of our themes to be played by uh, high level acoustic musicians. We didn't want to uh, have music just gener generated by computers. And again, when you, when you look at a sound of a guitar, which to our ear might be identical from a guitarist playing mm -hmm. or generated by a computer, that the oscillation, the vibration of the guitar playing by an acoustic musician is much more dynamic than what a computer generates. Nice. And in the science of sound, um, it's that, that, that the vibration is really where the efficacy of, of effect occurs. Okay. And so as a first project, and really what we thought was going to be the only project starting 13 years ago, was to use um, the six healing sounds of Qigong. Um, this is based on Chinese medicine, the five element theory. And, um, and what we know in Chinese medicine is the use of sound and healing goes back centuries. It's been recorded in literature for, cent for centuries, actually millennia. Um, and so you've all composed, and in fact, in the ancient Chinese literature, each of the main elements is given a key. So he composed in that key. We picked instruments that were we thought would express the elements of best, like an acoustic guitar for wood and a, and a Chinese uh, harp for water um, and, a, and a bamboo flute um, for fire. Um, and so we, we created this, uh, we called it the six healing sounds of Qigong. And, um, and within that, we already were beginning to use what we call isochronic beats, which is not binaural. This is just where there's a steady subliminal beat that's underneath this magnificent uh, recorded theme. And, um, and you don't need headphones for that. And we recommended it for meditation and for healing sessions and massage and you know, therapeutic effect. And uh, lo and behold, people loved it. Um, and uh, and I, I you know I still listen to those themes right every pretty much every day not all of them but but daily. Okay. And uh, what's happened then over the the rest of the these years is we've continued to produce music and learn more and more about neuroscience mm -hmm. um, and the effect of sound. And like I saw with Chinese medicine, just just this mushroom bloomed all around me of Chinese medicine. Now sound healing is blossoming uh, in so many ways and serious research is being done uh, the nih is interested in it um, major major medical studies and institutions are, are looking into it um, and sadly though you still if you're in a, a medical environment they're playing elevator music or cnn is on or you know something that's just like there's a disconnect mm -hmm. because the 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 therapy the therapeutics of a healing encounter begin way before a patient is talking to a practitioner. I know you know this too. You know, it's almost like when the patient or the client sets the appointment, the therapeutic process begins. Mm -hmm. And uh, research in placebo has shown that the doctor-patient environmental relationship is, is, has oftentimes as much efficacy as the pill that you're given or the procedure that you're given. Yeah. And so it's just been a, a delight and for me during, especially during COVID where my traveling and teaching was totally curtailed and my clinical practice was mm -hmm. cut back dramatically. Uh, Yuval's in LA, I'm in San Diego, um, his recording studios uh, at his home. Um, and we've been able to continue and very actively produce uh, healing music. And we called our company, uh, it, was, it was based on the Buddhist concept of metta or loving kindness. We call it meta mindfulness music that's wonderful so when that's the short answer <laughs> no this is great so when you're when you're choosing the music and creating this music are you are you designing music specifically with the binaural beats in it and then some music for the isochronic chronic. pulse isochronic pulse and then now how do the the six sound healings of qigong come in is that a separate set of music like how does how do you that was a production that was our first production okay. and uh, we used isochronic which is means mm -hmm. um, there's a beat a subliminal beat that the brain can feel and the body can feel um, 
or the, there's, there's an effect on the physiology and the, the neuroplasticity of our brains okay. that, with that. Okay. Um, and, uh, and you don't need headphones. Uh, For that one. You could just be in an, in, in an environment. Okay. Um, and then um, our, our next project we went to was the doses of Ayurvedic medicine. Okay. Um, and in, the, in those, again, we didn't use binaurals. Um, okay. Again, because we really were thinking more of, of, of a yoga class and, uh, so you, you know, just, a, just an open environment. Okay. Um, the, after that, then we started to think in terms of, well, we can actually add binaural back into things and, and, and re-release re them um, yeah. because it was streaming. Um, you know, we own the copyright to all this, so we can we can mix and match a little bit. Okay. And so we identify things as binaural um, in our titling now. And um, and so that's a different that's a different engineering issue, too, um, because you um, and then with with the binaurals, you decide with the actual chronic twos, you decide which brain state you want to have the recipient lured into or brought into. I was and, ask about um, that. and so that's uh, that's one thing. So if, if you want to go to, you know, for alpha, uh, you're between nine and, and 13 hertz. Um, and so that that's what you place in the you put in the music. Now, okay. to get to like to 10 hertz, uh, which is in which is in alpha, if you do binaurals, mm -hmm. you would do t like, for instance, 10 in one ear and 20 in the other. And it's the difference of that is the 10. Oh, OK. So that's how you, you the, the the fractals of the mathematics works. Okay. So we we choose and and then a lot of times again uh, we identify which which level we're taking people to. Mm -hmm. So if you you know you don't want to go into theta if you want to just meditate, uh, but or theta and delta if you want a, a sleep track you want to you want to take people there. Right. Something else we've done in some of our a little longer pieces is a journey. Where we start, where you know where we are right now. Now we're in beta, you know. We're just talking, or we, you know, and so we, we take from beta. If we go through alpha, we go to, and we, we we keep going down, and then we bring people back up so that they're re, they're they're refreshed. Oh, that's neat. Wow, and that's so, um, so really, once and, and uh, this is you know, it's like uh, the field is wide open now to these th kinds of ideas. No, something we talked about when, uh, which is really interesting, it actually came to our cog uh, our awareness only in the last couple of years is is gamma, um, gamma state brain waves, um, which is not really not, not really considered a meditative state per se, because we're we're in a beta now, so we're actively thinking and talking, and our brains are, are chitching around, but gamma is actually even faster. And um, and so and so, there's a lot of scientific interest in this. And any listeners, I'd recommend even googling about gamma. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very it's a very deep uh, on the there's not a there's not a well. Let me say within gamma, science has discovered that 40 hertz mm -hmm. is almost like a key that unlocks something very special in the brain and in consciousness. And it's specific. It's not 39 or not 41. A gamma ranges from 30 to 100 hertz. It's a, you know it's a wide range, but but at 40 hertz, there's something very specific that happens. And early research is showing that um, in this 40 hertz precise range, that um, the brain begins to clear out amyloids and tars, the the things that accumulate in the brain. So there's a, a Attend, there's an idea or they're looking into now um, treating dementia with 40 hertz, um, preventing, uh, preventing or ameliorating Alzheimer's symptoms. Um, interestingly enough, there's been tremendous benefit with pain and fibromyalgia, um, less tremors with Parkinson's. Wow. So um, I think I don't know if I said this out loud, but but there's no 40 hertz key on the piano. So the Western music. Yeah. Um, it, there's really, it's not really part of our um, tradition. It is in Asia, and um, 
And so we are now producing in, uh, in fact, we, we worked with a sitar player in Mumbai, India. He tuned his sitar just to 40 hertz for us. So this is, a, this is in production. It'll be hopefully available in, in the fall or in the winter this year. Okay. So this is an area of just dramatic excitement and it doesn't take away from the importance of, of the meditation. Mm -hmm. Now, some people feel that when the brain is in gamma, this is when um, our intuition is more open or, um, you know, where, they, where that situation occurs where you haven't thought of a friend in a few years and all of a sudden you think of them and they, they, you get an email from them. Yeah. Um, it seems like where maybe psychic awareness is happening or access to uh, like the web of, of awareness that's, that's around us that most of the time we're, we're not even uh, participating in consciously. Yeah. So it's, it's very exciting. Now, what's also interesting with the 40 hertz too is, and a lot of the research, it's being done with light also, where you have, uh, you can get 40 hertz lamps where there's a flickering at 40 hertz. Okay. Um, they, industry's got it into it and they're creating like lounge chairs with sonic vibrations in the chair at, at 40 hertz. But this is very, very exciting. And, uh, and again, because of the, the advances in technology and diagnostics, uh, we can track the brain in real time and uh, really see what's happening. And then, you know, symptomatology changes and there's, you know, there's testing with dementia in terms of remembering and awareness and things like that, which are very valuable in terms of studies. It's amazing. So with all these tunes and sounds and music that you're creating, is it typically for use during meditation only or can people have it playing in the background maybe they're studying something reading something working working absolutely. out absolutely um a recent project we did uh, we called kids sanctuary okay. where we did a whole uh, production designed for kids from like three to age nine mm -hmm. um there's a uh, there's one track it's for focus one is for for tummy ache uh, one is one is for sleep and one is more for just for, for calming down mm -hmm. and um so that's just music tracks and then the same music is done with an adult narrator um a woman who worked in children's tv as a as a director in children's tv for the bbc for many years who lives in la now mm -hmm. um she really understands children and uh, how to talk to them and has her own children and then there's a th third where we the music where there's a child narrator who's actually doing a listening awareness um, where he'll identify an instrument. See, uh, this is the flute. And when you hear the flute in the piece, you know, tell, tell your caregiver, your parent or your sibling, you hear that. So um, we're using as, as an educational tool and a, and a helping tool, but absolutely to your question, um, yeah, this isn't just for you know to, for for meditation. It's for intimacy. Our music um, is for just uh, happiness. Yeah. Uh, one of our productions actually has uh, vocal, uh, actually singing in it. It's mantras, um, yes. where we combine the idea of mantra and meditation um, with what's called the four divine states. From, from the Buddhist tradition. And we have four female singers that each sing one of the um, four divine states. Oh, wow. And that's a different form of meditation. You know, that's the mantra type of meditation, which is a little more vocalizing. Mm -hmm. You're, you can participate or, or just listen to it. Yeah, that's amazing. And so when you're doing like, let's say the osteochronic pulse, you, you're picking different frequencies for that as well. And yes. different for the yes. for the beats. Yes, so and that, that would be a, that would be a steady different. beat within within the within the piece. Right, but you can pick different different tempos or I guess frequencies of the beats to generate a certain response in the brain or in a person. Correct. Absolutely, exactly. You got it. Okay, so what are some of the what are some of the experiences that people have when they're listening to the different frequencies or beats? Can you kind of describe that a little bit? Yeah, I think this will be an interesting one because it's 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 not shocking, but it's affirming. Um, so in the first production, um, we do er the earth element, okay. which is this, which is the stomach, the spleen, and the pancreas. So it deals with digestion, um, and the the psycho emotional. It has to do with excessive thinking and, and worry, and um, and so we released it as as earth in that in that, and there's a qigong that you do with it too. 
Um, we then started to see um, that the, the uh, there was like we we ended up calling something called the meta uh, medicine meta medicine series. Okay. Music medicine series, mm -hmm. and so we we did Earth, and we called it uh, relieve uh, tummy ache. Nice. Uh, and. And it's on it's on it, it's it's not a separate it's on streaming services, especially a company uh, an app called Insight Timer, and it's the publisher. I get people's comments about it, mm -hmm. and so it's in the key the key associated with Earth, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it has didgeridoo and it has a deep Mongolian bass in it, really er earthy sounds, mm -hmm. and people write me and say it relieves it relieves their gastric distress. Wow. Okay. Now. Clearly, the suggestion probably thirty percent. You know, studies show that thirty percent would have a positive placebo effect. You know, and when I use the word placebo, I embrace it. Uh, I, you know, in medical research, it's the it's the bad boy or the bad person, the bad it. Um, but you know, if you can help thirty percent of the people just because, that's pretty dynamic. That's pretty yeah. great. Um, and so that, that, you know, and so, you know, to get people to be able to sleep and have less stress, I mean, that's, that's one thing. Um, we have another where, uh, so that's, that was an anecdote, which is fed, fed back to me by people's response. Um, the, the wood element in Chinese medicine resolves around the, the liver and the gallbladder and the emotion associated with, with that is uh, anger um, inability to express anger, which can manifest as depression. Although I don't really like to use the word depression in that that so much. It's just unexpressed anger, uh, indecision, and so we released it as as liver. And then we also did let go of anger. And uh, and again that, and, and even when we I, we have a piece we call relieve the blues. I don't like the the word depression. I just think it's become a everything gets thrown into that basket. Mm -hmm. um, so relieve the blues. And again, people write back and report mood shifts and resolution of, 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 of conflict. So uh, these are anecdotal. I mean, we don't, yeah. if you know, we've, any funding we would accept to do, we, I actually f funded a research project to see how the meridians, that's a whole nother story, uh -huh. were affected using technology. Um, but we very, uh, open to studies and we contact medical center you've all teaches at universities and attracts attention um and so we we're, we're in we're in this and we want to help further the science mm -hmm. and certainly the the experience yeah yeah well this is incredible and you're mentioning about the 40 hertz now when will you have your next production done we have a couple of things in 40 hertz uh, out already Okay. Um, we our website is metamindfulnessmusic.com. Okay. Um, that's not in hard disk. Um, okay. And I, I want to come to one issue too. And yeah. so the next the next piece which we're working on uh, with the sitar player and other musicians mm -hmm. um, probably is going to be later this year or early, early early next year. Okay. And so people can go to your website. They can down you know purchase and then download these yes. types of music. Yep. So with the binaural beats portion, how does that work? Can that still be done online in that you wear a headphone or is that something that has to be done in person? No, no, it, it could definitely be done uh, by downloading. And I want to make okay. a, an important point here, um, which is most of the music we download that we put on our iPhones um, or Google phones, put a plug in for them too, uh, <laughs> is MP3 technology. And uh, MP3 technology is amazing because all of a sudden on a little box, you can have 10,000 tracks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what MP3, the algorithm that MP3 uses is it strips a lot of the data out of the music so that it's gonna, you're going to still hear the music, but there's so much less data that the vibrational quality of the music is severely impacted. Okay. So um, if a if a CD or a CD quality electronically is, is wave W A V, mm -hmm. so if 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 this is a file for uh, a CD, the MP3 is going to look about like this. Got it. 
And so if you're, if you're downloading in WAVE compared to MP3, what might take 10 seconds might take three minutes. Okay. So, so you realize a whole lot more data is coming in. And uh, really any, any um, research done with music, um, and if people are really looking for, the, for strong therapeutic effect, MP3 is not gonna be uh, the choice. Um, so on our website, you can get things in MP in Wave too. Okay. Uh, we still have some CDs. I have a garage full of CDs uh, because we we were right right at the cusp when people stopped buying CDs and uh, went to uh, all electronic. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that, I think this is an important point in any and again any research you see on sound healing if it's not not done live by acoustic musicians. Um, see if it's MP3 or Wave or CD quality, um, and you know, as you know, and, and kind of work you do, where um, I would really strongly, if people are going to use music, to to make that distinction for them. Yeah, and I'm glad that you explained that difference. So, do people need anything specific to be able to play the Wave music versus the MP3? The best is 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 good headphones. Okay really more like a studio quality headphone where you can get the full full range. And especially when you get to 40 Hertz, because it's uh, like when I play 40 Hertz just on my uh, iPad, mm -hmm. the whole iPad vibrates. It's, it's, oh, it's so like okay. bass, deep, deep, deep bass. Okay. So that, that is a small thing. And again, the music can be enjoyable, uh, pleasant um, and stuff, but if, if we're really looking for the medical grade, Mm -hmm. um, there's a distinction to be made. And so do we understand yet in the brain what's happening when you use a binaural to create 10 hertz in the brain versus the isochronic pulse that's at 10 hertz? Is there, do we know what the difference or what happens in the body? Uh, that's a good question. Let's, okay. let's, let's sponsor that study. Okay. But what, what we do easy. know is, uh, and, and, and with 40 hertz, um, there are measurable changes in cognition and pain reduction. That that has been established, and it's not like I have my thumb on you know on the pulse of all of uh, the re research by any means. Um, but it's being looked into, and yeah. um, and I think it's extremely important because I mean sound is uh, I mean vibration is everything. Basically, we could say that, and uh, you know, from the from the electrons streaming around the nucleus of our cells. I mean, there's there's vibration. It's it's always happening, and um, and to synchronize the brain, um, because there's some there's some pretty cool um, like thermograms of the brain where the hot and cold areas before and after healing sound healing, and there's a there's a uh, and bipolar and schizophrenia in the brain will show a tendency to harmonize, um, which is remarkable. Because I mean, we're so, we're so bifurcated and scattered and we got so many things we're dealing with. Um, and I think, you know, from a therapeutic point of view, if, and like the use of the music, whether it's in a session or at home, if we can uh, help a person get to a place of, of like, there's space between thoughts, mm -hmm. There's uh, ease of breathing. Um, small miracles can occur in those spaces, as you well know. I mean, that's the core of what you're doing and uh, what you're doing so valuable. Um, and so, you know, there's, I think there's a synergy. There's a synergy with sound with uh, all healing modalities, even like, even like Western medical clinics. Um, if we could, in pediatrics, if we could have a child be calmer um, I mean, there's so the implications and the possibilities are just dramatic and profound. Absolutely. I would be curious to see if research comes up or is, is currently ongoing with the 40 hertz and the influence on the autonomics and getting into parasympathetic relaxation, yeah. because if there's a direct link there, that could be very powerful in so many levels in all yeah. aspects of life. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, with Alzheimer's, uh, the brain has it isn't able to cycle at forty hertz, and so if you start to feed forty hertz into the brain, it starts to f find a, a normalcy um, okay. of functionality. Um, there's a there's definitely a growing movement now of not 
just sitting back and saying dementia and Alzheimer's are just what's happening to everybody that there's we can we can work to prevent it and even in severe situations um, make make move the needle to benefit. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen and maybe you have also um, they'll they'll show a patient or a, a person. Let's just call them a person. They don't have to be a, uh, an elderly person just almost comatose um, and they've been unresponsive for a while. I mean, they might eat. They're just slouched in a chair in a rest home and they'll put music on oftentimes with the has just music on from a period in their life when they were young and vital you know mm -hmm. and they 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 wake up they they respond to the music mm -hmm. and um i think that's it's just it's, it's so vivid that the music has this capacity you know and and what's true i think in the in our culture everybody's looking for the cure but we can also just look for increments of benefit and um, and then urging back to life, urging back to vitality, awareness, uh, participation, uh, reduction of pain, uh, ease of digestion, you know, all these things that are possible. Absolutely. Because when we think about it, there's a lot that takes us down. It's not just one thing that usually works us down into a state. It's a lot of things so we can build ourselves back up by using many tools mm -hmm. and this sounds amazing yeah i mean i, I just as a, a comment too it's like a lot of the music uh that people listen to i'm going to say sort of young people not just you know the uh, edm electronic dance music and the, i mean i get the beat on stuff but it's deleterious it's i i, I don't think it's you can have a period of fun, but I think long-term use of that is uh, it's, it's contributing to some of the uh, issues we're facing as a culture. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to explore some of your music here and I would like to use it and even experiment with it in sessions with people. And when I'm working with people, because if I can shift someone differently and help their nervous system change even more, that's powerful. So yeah, yeah. Any it. anything I could do as far as we're in touch now. Yeah. If you want a suggestion of a certain track that you think might be beneficial. Yeah. Because that, like with the five elements, which is I'm most familiar with, and also with the Ayurvedic with the doshas, mm -hmm. if uh, that if someone's you know uh, vata pitta and, and no kapha, we can just play kapha. You know, I mean, and to try to to create that harmony between those those three components of the Ayurvedic medicine. That's incredible. I really appreciate your time and coming on here today. Can you remind us one more time what your website is? So uh, Metamindfulnessmusic.com. Wonderful. I thank you so much for your time. This has been fabulous, fascinating, and very educational. And it's, it's definitely ongoing. I mean, this is an exciting realm. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure, Amy. I really admire what you're doing and keep it up. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us today. Really, what an amazing cop concept topic please check out rick's information go to his website download some of his music and start playing with it help your brain that's all for today have a great rest of your weekend bye now bye now